Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Thursday morning, it's the last day of work for me. I commence my Christmas break from uh, close of business today and I look forward to a few days off where I can spend some time at home with my wife Paula, with my children, my grandchildren and celebrate this most beautiful time of year here in Sydney, Australia. Unlike other places throughout the world, Australia celebrates its Christmas during summer. Uh, there's no snow, there's no cold, there are no fireplaces, but a completely different and unique, may I add, experience for celebrating the birth of Jesus. A number of people take cruises, as you can see over there, there's a cruise ship parked up. I think that will be leaving in a few hours on its journey to who knows where. And following this vlog, I'll be heading to work and hopefully getting a short day. Not guaranteed, but uh, that's what the uh, hope is. Anyway, today what I want to do is continue the beautiful tradition of Jim's 5am club where we go on a walk and talk and hopefully see a beautiful sunrise. The sun will be rising behind the Sydney Opera House but as I move under the Harbour Bridge and go towards Pier 1 that sunrise will become more apparent. So let's just go for a walk over here to where the ships are docked and see where this book summary today leads us. The book summary today is entitled Resilience by an author named Eric Gretens. A book on resilience, on how we can bounce back, how we can incorporate a winning mindset and how we can make the most of all the invariable obstacles that will come our way uh, throughout our lives. Who knows where today is going to lead us uh, because today is unique. We've never experienced today ever before. Um, and interestingly, everybody is going to have a different experience of today. And that's how life is designed. That's how it's always been. And that's how it's always going to be. For each and every one of us, enjoy a different and unique past where we have different experiences, where we gain and um, and um, uh, and put away different slithers of reality the slithers of reality that I have gathered over my lifetime will be completely different to the slithers of reality that you have gained and gathered um, even if we live in the same place, even if we're brothers and sisters, even if we're twins, even if we're married, regardless of the time and space that you're in, the reality is that each person is going to experience a completely different life to any other person. Um, and those experiences, those slithers of reality concatenate they compound, they grow over time and um, influence to a greatest extent our worldview. 
and not only are we going to have a unique and different past we're also going to have a unique and very very different present a very different now I am here you are somewhere else and even if you were here right next to me you're going to be experiencing a different now because you're going to probably be, be focusing on something completely different so uh, that's life and as we concatenate as we join as we build our slithers of reality as we said it's going to shape our worldview it's going to shape how we see the world how we decide on things what things mean to us and we're all going to have a different future a very different future whilst we live in parallel worlds we are as we said experiencing different things at different times making decisions and interpreting things as and when they come into our lives and it all depends on your mindset it all depends on your belief system it all depends on your resilience and your ability to use those things um, for your benefit because everything that happens to us happens to us for a reason um, it's God's will and it's up to us to understand to interpret to decipher what God's will is in order to make the most of these slithers of reality that come into our lives so that we live our calling or callings to the best of our ability and express ourselves um, with all God's glory so what I'd like to commence with today on this book summary is a quote from the author where he profoundly and poetically says I begin I act and I end with humility for humility is clarity and leads to an open mind and a forgiving heart with an open mind and a forgiving heart I see every person as superior to me in some way I see every person as a teacher and from there I can grow with wisdom and I think it's quite powerful the way he says it that not everybody is superior to you in every way but everybody without doubt is superior to us in some ways because God gifts people with charismata with the gifts of intelligence the gifts gifts of knowledge of strength each person has a different um, recipe or a different set of ingredients of gifts that they can use that they can um, uh, mix together to help them achieve their calling their specific calling their specific recipe that they are putting together and we know that when we take ingredients and we mix them together in different ways you know we have different outcomes so what the author here is saying is that God gives us gifts, God gives us charismata, and it's up to us to decide on how we use them, but also the fact that we all have different amounts of different gifts is going to develop a different outcome for each and every one of us. For some will use all of their gifts in all of their glory to glorify God to serve God to serve other people to love and to fully express their being and others will waste their gifts and not use them as intended um, which is at the end of the day it's free will you know you're free to do whatever you choose 
with the gifts that God gives you. So what else can we learn from this wonderful author? And we know that the, the topic here is all about resilience. So the author here is it defines resilience as the ability to bounce back from adversity. It's about finding joy despite pain and hardship. And to understand one thing, to understand one thing, um, that suffering is negotiable. It's optional. You don't have to suffer if you've got pain in your life because suffering is your response to pain. Not everybody is called to suffer because suffering is your interpretation of what is going on in your life. And some people find pain and hardship as an opportunity to grow and develop, to learn, to become better versions of themselves, whereas other people use suffering and hardships as an excuse as to why they should give up on life and how and why they should become bitter and angry at the world and fight life, fight the world, fight their parents, fight their friends, fight their culture, fight their religion. So the choice is yours, the free choice is yours and that's what we learn from our Christian backgrounds, that we all have a free choice to do whatever we want, whenever we want, but to know that each of those choices that we make, each of those decisions that we make, are going to have first, second and third level consequences that impact us, but not only us, they impact our neighbour and they impact our families and they impact other people and they impact our future in other ways, ways that we haven't yet imagined. So the key message is to have an open mind and <clears throat> to have an attitude, um, a positive attitude to help us get through the many tests that we're all going to face at different times throughout our lives. So suffering, as we said, is optional. Suffering is negotiable. You don't have to suffer if you're going through pain and hardship. It's the mindset that you have and the way you see things, the way you see yourself, the way you see the world and the way you understand that in order to grow we need to lean just outside our comfort zones. So we need to welcome, we need to embrace hardship is a key message that comes from this author and to leverage hardship and to leverage pain and to leverage discomfort to our advantage to make sure that we use it to service to serve us and to serve others and to serve God because the key is to be at peace with yourself and to not fight life at every transaction so the first formal point that comes from this author is to understand that challenge is a natural part of life. It's a natural part of everybody's life. And not to think that you are singled out and you're the only one going through challenges in your life but you can overcome those challenges by having a specific winning mentality. And that winning mentality is what this author is going to talk about throughout the rest of the book summary. So he mentions here that yes, we all have challenges Every person has different challenges. Every path that we take has a hump 
in the road and that's how God has designed it and it's at the beginning of that road where that hump is is where we have our greatest competition and we are tempted when we come to this hump in the road to say it's not worth the struggle and this is where Satan this is where the devil this is where the demons come into our lives and distract us and tell us that it's not worth the struggle and to basically go and do something else but if you don't struggle if you don't challenge yourself on a regular basis then you're not going to achieve any of those important things that you want to achieve in your life because as we said before as we alluded to every road every path has a hump at the beginning of that path but every road and every path also has a bend or two in it no path is straight most paths have bends in it and most people when they see that bend think that it, it is the end of that road but it's only when you go along that path when you continue to traverse that path that you realize that it's not a it's not the end but it's just a bend so that's why as we mentioned before that every path that we follow in life is going to have the greatest bottleneck the greatest number of competitors at the beginning of it just before the hump is where you're going to have most people competing against you but it's the ones that fight the ones that have the momentum it's the ones who are able to get over that initial hump that are freed up with hardly any competition and then traverse that path follow that path which leads to other paths which has other humps which takes you to paths which have got bends which you may think are ends now I'm not saying that you're not going to hit dead ends along the way but hitting a dead end is a good sign it means that you turn back and you take the other fork which will lead you to your promised land um, in terms of your goal so we need to understand that nothing worth getting is easy to get and every road will challenge us and we need to embrace we need to accept we need to love that challenge is the key message we need to also be cognizant of the fact that regardless of where you are regardless of what path you're on regardless of what challenges you are facing there are people who are worse off than you there are people who would absolutely love would give their right arm would give their left arm would give both arms to be exactly where you are at the moment in your life even if your life is difficult even if your life is troubled there are other people who would gladly swap places with you at this point in time to take on your life because your life is much much better than their lives at this point in time an important point to understand and an important thing to appreciate that your life isn't all that bad regardless of how challenged you may think it is a profound and powerful point so once again the key message from this author is that we all need to accept the challenges that we have and to embrace them not to fight them to embrace them and to be brave because we don't know none of us know the power that we have 
until the time comes for us to express that power and to act under duress only to find that we can easily easily get over under through the challenges that we face The second point that this author makes is that resilience comes by having powerful, purposeful habits and also being accountable. So it's not about having the habits, but what the author is saying is when you have habits, when you have synethesis, as the Greeks say, what it does is it makes you accountable. It makes you consistent. It enables you to act in a certain way without having to think about it, without having to figure out what you need to do because your actions are predetermined. As long as those actions are aligned to your values, as long as your actions are moving you and giving you and propelling you and giving you momentum, then you're going to be taking small steps which will compound and, um, and add to the previous steps. And before you know it, you will have a massive amount of momentum to be able to get over any hump that you may find in the road along the path. I'll just keep on walking up to the Harbour Bridge here and see if I can get a glimpse of the magnificent sunrise that is just coming up in the east. It's just hidden by the Opera House at the moment. But when I get over to the other side there where Pier 1 is, that's where I can get a good angle and see the sunrise happening down the harbour. A couple of people fishing here. How wonderful would that be to be retired, to be in the years where you can find peace and you can just start your morning with your mate fishing whilst having this beautiful view of the harbour bridge and also looking up the harbour and seeing the ferries moving back and forward and being blessed by this beautiful sunrise. So the author mentions here that resilience comes with power habits and accountability and as we say, it's what you consistently do on a daily basis that reflects and expresses who you are. What you do every now and then um, can be fake. It can be just a thing that you do just to tick the box. But the things that you automatically and naturally do on a regular basis are the things that define, as we said before, who you are. You can't bluff consistency. You can't bluff doing things over and over and over again. So the author here encourages people to bring into their lives one specific habit. And it's the habit that I live. It's the habit that I express every day. He says to get up at 6 a.m., to get up early, to get up before everybody else gets up, to get up, to reflect, to get up, to plan, to get up early, to prepare. And um, I go one step better. I get up at 4.30 and uh, I'm on the road and I'm delivering my gym's 5 a.m. club between five and six most mornings. And it's an opportunity for me to think, to take notes, to reflect, and to present, to live, learn, and pass it on. And it's something that I 
um, encourage you to consider as well. I'm just under the Harbour Bridge at the moment. No, never, ever get tired of its magnificence. How big is this place? And to consider that it was built in the uh, 1920s is even more special. And the other thing that the author reminds us of, it's a powerful point, that in our lives, results are delayed. Results never happen in real time. We live in a lag time. We live in a lag time, which means that for most of the things we do, we've got to do it with a particular amount of faith and hope that uh, what we do, consistently do, is going to generate the results that we want. But because we live in lag time, we need to trust the invisible results that happen through our efforts. That morning run that we do every day, whilst it's painful, whilst it is uncomfortable, um, is creating and generating, hopefully, invisible results. Results that you can't see today, but over your lifetime, you're going to realize those results um, because as we said, we live in lag time. So we're just going to do, 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 and then hope that the results, uh, the harvest of the, that fruit happens at a later date. It's not guaranteed. Sometimes you do, 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 and you don't get the results that you desire. It doesn't matter because by doing what you're doing, you're building skills, you're building mind patterns and mind maps that'll help you solve other challenges that may come your way later in life or better still will help you help others to solve problems that may come their way at a later time of their lives so once again the message from this author is to have faith in what you do on a regular basis and to know that sooner or later the results will materialize um, and bring forth um, fruit um, in, in a bountiful harvest. So have faith, invest in yourself, invest in others and know that what you do on a consistent basis is going to deliver at some point in time, down the track. Um, the, the last point that the author makes is to set purposeful goal, goals in our lives and to understand that we're going to fail. We're going to fail time and time again. We're going to fail miserably on occasion. But to understand that these failures are just a natural Part of life and to reflect on those failures, reflect on those mistakes and to ask yourself could you have done anything better or could you have done anything differently and to know that each person as we said has a unique life and that each person has a unique fate um, luck to a certain extent or God's will you know God may not will us to do it now he may want us to do it a little bit later so what we should be doing is not giving up on our dreams and goals just because you fail doesn't mean if you try again using a different method you're not going to succeed anyway at the end of the day we need to try and try our best to reflect and express our calling as long as that calling is serving God with all our heart, mind and soul and serving our neighbour and loving our neighbour as we love ourselves and importantly 
the message there is we do need to love ourselves, we do need to invest in ourselves, we do need to be the strongest we can be, because through that strength, through that wealth that we gain from working those gifts, those God-given gifts, those charismata that we have, that we can help others. You know, God gives us money, God gives us intelligence, God gives us opportunity, God gives us um, networks, God gives us energy for a reason. And that reason isn't for us just to selfishly use and enjoy ourselves, but it's for us to leverage and to use to serve God and to serve others. So the reason why we get educated is to become better Christians. The reason why we become wealthy is so that we can become, we can become generous with our money, generous with our time, generous with our skills so that we can live, learn and pass it on. So some powerful lessons here and we need to understand that the author here tells us time and time again that the pain and the hardship that we have in our lives is temporary and it's a stepping stone to our future. It's a stepping stone to success but we need to have the right mindset. We need to have goals <coughs> that have purpose, that give us purpose, that give us a reason to stay up late at night and to get up early in the morning. Um, and to know that there is no such thing as boring people. I remember when I was younger, somebody said to uh, in class oh geez I am bored or I feel bored and the teacher said there's no such thing as a boring person there's only people who have boring goals boring dreams so the call to action here is to be inspired through inspired goals and inspiring goals and to know that for each and every person the best is yet to come and not to think that the best years were behind you I often think and I often say to my wife wouldn't it be great to have a pause button in life and hit the pause button right now and enjoy life now whilst we've got our health whilst we've got time whilst we've got our family but my wife also reminds me she goes James if you hit the pause button now then you're not going to get an opportunity to enjoy what God has planned for us in our future um, other grandchildren um, the joys of seeing grandchildren grow and develop and hopefully going to school finishing school, enjoying school, um, getting married one day, having their families one day, becoming grand great grandparents. Whilst it's a long time off, um, the only way we can get there, if it is God's will, is to trust in God's providence and to let God um, do and to um, allow his plan to be fulfilled so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club on what is the last day of work for me in 2023, uh, 2022. I look forward to starting again my work life in 2023. I enjoy working, I enjoy um, being active, I enjoy being with people so hopefully we can continue along the same vein next year I hope to bring you more Jim's 5am club over the uh, 
over the Christmas break where we can um, go together on a walk and talk where we can be on a an adventure a journey together where we can learn something new and hopefully incorporate it into our lives I look forward to coming to you from a different place with a different message of empowerment and as we mentioned to learn something new and to use something new so that we can have a better life and that we can ensure that others around us can also benefit from the wisdom the other people's experience the OPE that we can generate over time because as we've mentioned time and time again we each have a different life but we each can't live long enough to experience the full gambit of experiences that life has to offer so we have to rely on slithers of reality the slithers of reality rea reality that we are able to generate through our own personal experiences as well as experiences that we uh, inherit from other people from our parents our grandparents our uncles our aunts our culture our religion but we can't all live all of those experiences and one of the most effective and efficient ways to build an inventory of experience is not to try and live it because as we said we can only live one experience at a time but we can gain we can harness many many experiences at the same time through OPE through reading books books that are written by people who have sat down have reflected and have tapped into some very very deep thinking and come up with wisdoms the wisdom of the past the wisdom of our generation and use that as a framework to help us um, build a frame of reference because the more slithers of reality we're able to benchmark to and baseline to to compare and contrast the better our perspective may be I'm not saying it will be because uh, demons the devil also manipulates uh, the world around us and we could have um, slithers of reality or apparent reali reality that are manipulated and morphed into images that may look real but are not real you know, as we can see on the internet on social media on media you now there are people all the time um, making things up using the platform to uh, using the platform to uh, spread misinformation and disinformation so we need to be discerning I guess is the big message we all need to be discerning and to be on guard and uh, looking out um, in our world to make sure that uh, the uh, slivers of reality that we accept that we think about are in fact the ones that serve us the ones that are going to protect us protect us our families and the ones that are going to lead us on the good road and not the road to disaster and um, a self-sabotage anyway I think I'm done it's been a longish sort of uh, blog today but I've enjoyed delivering it it's the topic that I absolutely love and adore and something that I'm getting better and better at Without, within a few weeks I think I will be able to announce that I've uh, delivered 1500 vlogs so achieved another massive milestone 
in my uh, YouTube channel and I do plan on starting another YouTube channel where I translate a thousand vlogs that have put, been put together by a monk in Greece named Yeron Nectarios. It's a, uh, there'll be vlogs on the Greek Orthodox faith and it's hopefully something that I can put together to benefit my children, my grandchildren and other generations that come in to the family and other friends and family members as well who are interested, who don't speak Greek, but I, you know, through my love, would love to be able to interpret and translate what this monk is saying so that it can be captured for this generation and future generations to come. So once again, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. And I look forward to coming to you again um, very, very soon. Take care, yasas, and bye for now.